with the Holy Ghost. I'm going to stop here and just make a commercial. We, we teach in the Hebrews on Wednesday night, and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to rush it, but I'm going to get through Hebrews because I'm excited about teaching about the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. And we're going back into our school format. Amen. On that class. Amen. But, but anyway, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, killing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And what the Lord wanted me to remind you is that Jesus said, the works that I do, you shall do also, and greater works than these. And that Jesus went about doing good. And, you know, we think doing, doing good is social. But I want you to shift from a social mindset to a kingdom mindset. That as a believer, we always represent the kingdom of God. When you are an ambassador of a country, you are never off duty. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. When you're in the government, when you're a high-ranking official, you're never off duty. We watch uh, Madam Secretary, you know, and, you know, it's one of them things that, you know, uh, I, I just had to start watching it. Uh, either go somewhere else. Amen. And, and now I like it, too. Amen. Hallelujah. One of the ways that wise make their husbands do stuff. Amen. Was. But anyway, I like Madam Secretary because it's really cool. And the thing about it is she gets calls anytime, anywhere. And whatever she's doing, when it's a government matter, she has to drop it. Amen. Get up 4 o'clock in the morning, got to go to a meeting, go to the White House. Somebody done blew some up, you know. And it, it's like that's true. That's true. And when you're in the kingdom of God, you are never off duty. Hallelujah. As an ambassador for Jesus, you are never off duty. This business of having a church life and then getting your life is not kingdom. Amen. When you are in the kingdom of God, you are always Everything you do represents Jesus. And then on the side of that, he still wants us to not just represent, but to do good. He wants us to heal. He wants us to exercise of demons who just influence thoughts. Amen. The main thing that demons do is influence thoughts. So sometimes you can use your social media platform, your page, to just speak a counter thought, to speak truth when somebody puts a lie out there. Like some, I saw some commercial, um, I'm not gonna call the name because I, I don't wanna pull our page down for hate speech, but I saw a political commercial. And he's like, I'm this great champion of reproductive health. And so I made a simple post and I said, abortion is not reproductive health. It's not. And so that lie went out there, so I came back with truth. Because that's what kingdom does. That's what kingdom does. Amen. Hallelujah. Call it what it is. Amen. Hallelujah. And so I'm not going to get into that discussion. But all I'm saying is that there's a lot of stuff out there. And we look at it and we shake our heads when God wants us to have a voice. A lot of prophets been talking about 2020. Part of it is the year of the voice because the, what is it, 57, whatever, the Hebrew letters, and it, 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 it corresponds to mouth or voice. Yes. And that this is the time when we as a people of God need to have a voice and not just be silent. When the Christians are silent, when God's people are silent, when God's people are passive, when God's people keep church in the four walls, then all kind of craziness goes on. God has put us here to check this stuff and he is expecting for his kingdom to be manifested. Now we have an advantage that the world doesn't have because the world talking about the devil's side they can't pray. Come on somebody. And one of us can chase a thousand. Two of us can put ten thousand to flight and you can be in your war room at home in your prayer closet, on your bed, in your chair, wherever you pray, in your car, come on somebody, wherever it is, and you can change stuff. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen, the Bible says Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly. He didn't have a whole group, didn't have a whole church, 
didn't have a prayer movement. It was one man. Yeah. Hallelujah. Right. Bible yeah. says it was just like us. Yes. But he prayed earnestly. Yes. He stopped it from raining on the planet for three and a half years. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And so the kingdom manifestation is that we got to do what Jesus did. Right. Yeah. Every time you help somebody, do it in Jesus' name. Yes. When you bless somebody, Pastor Darnella said, sometimes God will tell you to give. To help somebody. Right. And you know if you're not careful. The spirit of pride will come on you. And you'll feel like it's something you did. You got to check that thing. And tell them I did it in Jesus name. Yeah. Then the spirit of religion will challenge your th thinking. Well I don't want to sound religious. I, no Jesus name is not religious. All right now. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus name is not religious. Yeah. That's why when they call you into something. As a religious person. They don't want you to even say his name. You can talk about everybody else but Jesus. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Manifest the kingdom. Yes. Manifest the kingdom. Hallelujah. Do good. Yes. Heal. Yes. You go to the hospital, visit somebody. That's what we're supposed to do. Yes. Be nice to them. Be kind. Don't stay all day. They really don't want to be bothered most of the time. But <laughs> I mean, you know, the reason why you're supposed to be in there is to get some rest. In between you and the doctors coming every two minutes and nurses and people poking and prodding and bells ringing and folks coding and all kind of crazy stuff that goes on in that atmosphere. And the fact that usually <coughs> it's too cold or too hot, you know, amen, how that stuff goes. And so you go visit, have some fun, be nice, you know, don't make the visit just about what's wrong with them unless they make it that. And then pray. 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 Because that's kingdom manifestation. Kingdom manifestation. Listen, doctors can't stop prayer. Doctors can't stop the Holy Ghost. IV can't stop the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So pray. Offer prayer. Offer prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's manifesting the kingdom. You get it? That's manifesting the kingdom. What I'm saying is when we connect what we do to God's purpose, it changes the value of everything. We got a lot of people that do stuff in the community here. But this, do this for kingdom. Do this for kingdom. Because what happens is what you do in the name of Jesus the King gets backed up supernaturally. And it can be as practical as driving around with that light on your car and patrolling. And it gets backed up supernaturally. I'm going to share this with you, and I'm just flowing today, and it's all right. I'll get you out on time. Kingdom manifestation. So I'm working on a project, and I was meeting with some community leaders. And even though I'm the CEO of Detroit Community Solutions, most people still associate me with Man Network, which is cool because, you know. Um, so this guy is a retired sergeant of the Detroit Police Department. And he said, you know, years ago, because we're working on a project in an area. And so he said, years ago, um, we had, he said he was, uh, had the, the canine. And he was special, like special police. He said, years ago, in this area, we had some big problems. And um, he said, we tried everything. We did stakeouts, decoys, had the dogs out. And nothing changed. When you all came and started patrolling in that area, I was watching the numbers and stuff went do 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 do. Now you know what that is? That's supernatural. Because we never started this for a grant. We never started this for a program. We never started this even just to solve a problem. But we started it for the kingdom. Hallelujah. For the kingdom. Kingdom manifestation that's the difference things change because god was backing it up see when you have a food program that's kingdom folks do more than just eat come on now hallelujah praying over that food thank you jesus it makes a difference hallelujah hallelujah i'm, I'm I, I could tell you that um people can get saved people can get changed People can get healed. Yes. Amen. Yes. 
Hallelujah. I mean, when you bless your food, expect it to be blessed. Amen. And stop cheating. Stop blessing stuff. God bless these fried chitlins. Lord, <laughs> I know I shouldn't be eating them, but Lord, bless the fried chitlins, Jesus. Fried in Crisco, Jesus. Hallelujah. No, I mean, you know. <laughs> he, 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 he might bless them, but I mean, you know, amen. But expect it to be blessed. He said he blessed our bread and water to take sickness out of the midst of us. So even while you're eating your, your organic salad, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> your free-range anti, no antibiotic chicken, hallelujah. Your grass-fed T-bone, thank you, Jesus. Believe God for healing. Somebody say kingdom manifestation. You see what I'm saying? What I'm doing is trying to take the religion out and put the spirit of God in everything that we do because when we give our lives to Jesus all of us belongs to him <laughs> and so everything we ought to do everything we do ought to reflect his kingdom there's never a time when your life is just your own the day you get saved you are bought with a price now you belong to the kingdom <laughs> you're a soldier you're an ambassador hallelujah Glory to God, you're part of the kingdom. I'm still reviewing, but we're going to get out on time. All right, let's go to Luke 4. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Luke chapter 4. <laughs> Luke 4. God's still talking to you. Amen. Well, I'm, I'm not surprised. There's a call on your life. Amen. It's going to be interesting and amazing to see what God's going to do in your life. Amen. The day's going to come when folks that tease you now are going to respect you later. You'll see. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Luke 4, 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's what Jesus was anointed to do. And I can hear somebody saying, well, do it, Jesus. Uh, Oh, Lord, do it, Jesus. But over here in John chapter 20. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Where is that in John 20? He said, amen. Verse 21. 2021. Then said Jesus unto them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, so send I you. Hallelujah. So just like Jesus was anointed to do this, you are anointed to do this. That's why after the Holy Ghost came on the early church, they did all of this. They fed folks. They healed folks. They cast out devils. They did all of that. And we can do all of that. Kingdom. Say Kingdom. Kingdom. Manifestation. Manifestation. That's kingdom manifestation. Yes. Hallelujah. All right. Now let's go to Luke 15. <coughs> Lord, I thank you. Expect kingdom manifestation. And expect total restoration. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Total restoration. Amen. But we're not going to have a long one today. Luke chapter 15. 11. All right. Total restoration. I'm teaching like Dr. Winston. Now you do one thing, finish, and go to the next. All right. Not trying to do that. It just, I know that. 
and said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance on riotous living. Let's stop right here. So this, the man had two sons. Whenever Jesus uses a phrase like that, he, he, he's telling you to note that it was two sons because he's going to paint a picture of contrast. He's going to paint a picture of contrast between the two sons. So it says he had two sons. And the one son said, Father, give me my inheritance. And you read this, and it's like, well, you know, he just asked for his inheritance. But if you were in the Hebrew culture and you read that, really, that was the same as wishing the father was dead. For him to go to his father and ask for his inheritance was a high insult. It was a high insult. And so, it, again, it would be like to walk up to his father and say, I wish you were dead. High insult. But I want you to notice that the father didn't fight. He didn't argue. He didn't do any of that. He just gave it to him. He gave it to him. And so, um, and, and he gave it to him fast. He said, the goods had fallen to me. And, but I want you to notice verse 12, something interesting. He had two sons. The one son, the younger son, asked for the inheritance. But the one with the birthright didn't ask for anything. But, oh God. But he gave them their portion. Now, if you understand birthright law, the elder son, who we're not really talking about, he got a greater portion because that's, that's how. Not only did he get inheritance, but he had control of everything. That's part of the birthright. Hallelujah. As the elder son, which is very important. But um, it's the one that stayed in the father's house. 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 The but the father divided their portion to everyone. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. All right. And so verse 13, not many days after the youngest son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And he wasted his substance with riotous living. Now, his inheritance, this guy is going to establish his own life. I think we have the wrong picture. We look at this as like he had a bag of money and he just went somewhere. But if you understand, all you got to study is oh, Abraham and stuff. And they didn't just have money. They had cattle. They had servants. They had all of this stuff. Come on now. And so home slice is not just leaving with a little knapsack with, you know, $1,000 in it. Right? Amen. He has substance. He has wealth. That word substance is wealth. Huh? And so he has all this stuff, and he's taking it with him. That's important because when it says he wasted it on riotous living, he lost it all. He was a son. Mm. I don't know what pushed him. I don't know what was going on in his mind. I don't know what he thought was out there. But something was calling him. And baby, it got him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You'd be surprised at what's calling you. But you better know what it's calling you to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This prodigal son, they call him the prodigal son. You know, he went out there, and the Bible says he wasted his substance. And with riotous living, he went to a far country. See, verse 13 lets you know he had more than money because it says he gathered all together. So he had food, he had seeds, he had 
uh, money, he had animals, he had clothes, he had all this stuff. He's leaving. He's leaving. He's moving out. We don't see that. We get the impression that he's just going to have fun. That's no, he's moving out. He's moving out. He, he's saying, all I need, Lord, help me. Help me to preach this. All I need is what the Father can give me. I don't really need the Father. That's American Christianity today. Got a lot of people. They got time for everything. They don't have time for the Father. Don't have time. I don't like church. I don't like worship. I don't like this. All that's the Father's house. Yeah. Jesus said, my house is a house of prayer. And people don't like that. They don't like that. But they like, but they pray. God bless this. I see them all the time. The Lord bless me with this. And then cuss, 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 cuss. And, you know, righteous living, righteous living. And, you know, you don't know what, what, what's going to be on the next flip. Floop. You don't know if they're going to be praying or cussing. You don't know if they're going to be praising or fighting somebody. Come on, somebody. But see, when you want the Father, just, just put your hand on your heart and say, Lord, Holy Spirit, help me to want the Father. Say, it's better in the Father's house. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So he wanted the Father. And, and, but the Son, no, I'm gone. So he wasted his substance, verse 14. And when he had spent all, there rose a mighty famine in the land. He began to be in want. Somebody say total restoration. Total restoration. First of all, the famine didn't come till he had spent all. That is the major trap of the enemy. He had a lot of stuff. And it took... He didn't lose this overnight. Are you with me? He didn't lose this stuff overnight. He had a lot of stuff. Little by little. Little by little. A little bit here. A big chunk there. A little bit here. But it was all part of the enemy's plan to strip him of everything. And when he had lost everything, then it got bad. See, a lot of people think the grass is greener on the other side. And they get to the other side, and the grass is greener for a minute. And that's the deception of sin. That's the deception of apostasy. That's the deception of it. But a famine came, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, sent unto him unto his fields to feed the swine. Now, I believe here, this is just me, that at this point, he's, he's lost stuff. He's lost stuff. He's lost all his stuff, but I think he's even lost his. And I'm going to go here for a minute. I'm going to suggest to you that he even lost his coat, his garment. Coats back then were very important because they represented Outer garments were representation. Just like now, doctors wear certain outfits to let you know they're a doctor. Uh, police wear stuff to let you know they're police, right? Um, different people wear things. You know, modern day preachers wear gym shoes and cut out jeans to let you know they're pastors. Amen. That was free. Amen. <laughs> but you know, they wear stuff to let you know who they are. I don't care about that stuff. I just don't want to wear it. I, I might wear some gym shoes, not no cutouts, not for me. Uh-uh, I'm 56, not cutout, not for me. Amen, but I don't care what people wear, but I'm just saying, clothes represent something. So there was a status, I told you he was wealthy. So this coat, I believe, was similar to Joseph's coat. That it was a coat that represented I'm wealthy. And when people saw that, they treat him a certain way. Happens to me all the time. People will treat me different depending on how I'm dressed. If I go somewhere like this, you know, they're going to be like, yes, sir. And da, da, da. even you go to a restaurant, you go like this, they're going to give you a good table. You go just plain, they're going to put you by the kitchen or something, unless you check them on it. People judge by appearance. So when he went to the citizen and joined himself to him, 
There was nothing about him that identified who he was, so the person treated him like a servant. And so he told him to go feed the pigs. Verse 16 says he would have, he would have fain have filled his belly <clears throat> with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, so he, got, he lost everything. But verse 17 says he came to himself. Thank God for coming to yourself. Hallelujah. He came to himself. That lets me know that really when you're praying for people that are kind of walked away from God and are out there, we all know them. We don't, there's not a judgment. It's just a reality. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I know we don't know what's going on in their heart. But we see what's going on in their life. And if we deny that because we don't know what's going on in our heart, we miss an opportunity to truly intercede. Amen. And they are not going to be all right just because you love them, just because you like them, just because they're your relative, just because they're your kid. The devil would love to do nothing more than to discredit and dishonor you by doing something to your family. Don't you let it happen. But you let it happen. Amen. Pray. Fast. Believe God. So he came to himself. When people are out there, they're out of their mind. They're out of their self. They're out of their character. He was the father's son. This was not his destiny. It was not his purpose. Come on, Walls. It was not where he was supposed to be. It wasn't his assignment. It wasn't his time. It was none of that. But he came to himself. And he said, how many hired servants? See, this, he's comparing himself to the servants now. Because when you get away from the father's house, you get reduced to an identity that is not yours. Talk about total restoration. I'm almost here. <clears throat> yeah, I got to get here. He came to himself and said, how many hired servants? And my father's had bread to spare. I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father. He's getting it together now. He's making his speech. And I will say, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And am no longer worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. He arose, came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him, had compassion, and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Total restoration. Hallelujah. Watch this. <clears throat> so he's lost everything. He's coming back. Thank you, Jesus. And the father sees him and runs to him. He's afraid. He's know, he knows he's blown it. He knows what he did when he asked for the inheritance. Come on now. But the father loves him. The father wants him back. Total restoration. So the father comes to him as he's coming towards the father. The father's coming to him. Total restoration. When that's why I love it. I can see people starting to move back towards God. And what I know is that this loving father is moving towards them. Hallelujah. And when he gets to them, when they connect, there's going to be love. There's going to be embrace. And there's going to be total restoration. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And so then he came to his father. And verse 21. And the son said unto his father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and no longer worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to the servants, who table Shanda, bring forth the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Bring hither the fatted calf and kill it. Let us eat and be merry. Let's stop here. So the father never said a word about what he had done. He word about where he had been. Total restoration. <clears throat> the father just started, because you know what? The father didn't care about that, Pastor Reuben. The father cared about the son. Yes. And the first thing that he was looking at is not what he had done but what had happened to him out there. Mm -hmm. And he started total restoration. Total restoration. First thing, he said, bring the best robe and put it on him. Why? 
because he smelled like pigs. He was raggedy, stanky, dirty. Come on now. Shamed. Right? Disgraced. And the first thing the father does, it says, I'm going to cover you. I'm going to cover you. <clears throat> Restoration covers. Oh, yeah. I'm going to cover you. So he puts the best robe on him. This speaks of honor. It speaks of restoration of dignity. Glory be to God. Because when we get out there, we lose our dignity. Holiness is dignified. Whew. Holiness is dignified. We worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Hallelujah. That's why you can't, you can't get in pride when you're holy. But holy, holiness looks good on us. Hallelujah. Somebody say holiness is still right. But in Job 2.25, he said, I will restore the years. The canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm have eaten away from you. God says, I will restore that. I'll restore it. <coughs> the um, NET says, I'll make it up to you. What a loving God that would... <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me, would respond, I'm almost done, would respond to this son this way. No chastisement, no rebuke, total restoration. Hallelujah. And the first thing he says, I'm giving you your honor back. I'm giving you your dignity back. I'm covering the stench of your failure. I'm covering the mess that you made. I'm covering you. I'm covering you. I'm wrapping you up. Hallelujah. I'm restoring you to righteousness. Yes. He put that robe around him. Amen. And then, Amen. hallelujah says, and bring a ring and put it on his finger. Hallelujah. And the ring speaks of authority. But the ring also speaks of sonship. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. He's saying, you're still my son. You went out there and you did what you did. Wished I was dead, but you're still my son. Hallelujah. That's why you better watch how you talk to pe about people. Because they're still his son. They're still his daughter. They may be out there. They may be doing this and that. But they're still the son. Still the daughter. Come on now. And the thing is, even when you're a son in the house, you'll never be able to comprehend a love like this. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. On his finger. Hallelujah. Galatians 4. I got to go here. Amen. I'm, 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 I'm on my way. Ain't nobody rushing but me. Calm down, Russell. Chapter 4, verse 1. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. Come on now. But is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Somebody say sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, thou art no more servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. No longer servant, but a son. Hallelujah. And so when he put that ring on his finger, he restored him to sonship. Hallelujah. So he gave him authority, but he also gave him access. Go back to Luke 15. And let me just point one thing to you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. He had access. As a son, you have access. And I pray that you use this. I pray that you take this home with you today. Glory be to God that you have access. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In verse 31, he says, and he said unto the son, thou art ever with me and all that I have is thine. Oh, glory be to God. All that I have is thine. So when you're a son in the house, all that the father has is yours. Yes. And you have 
access to it. And so in putting that ring on him, he restores his authority. He can command the servants. He don't have to be a servant. He can command the servants. Come on now. He has access, everything in the house, every room. Come on, somebody. Everything in the house he has access to. Total restoration. Total restoration gives you authority. It gives you access. It covers you. It gives you dignity. It gives you honor. Total restoration. Then they put shoes on his feet. And I believe that's protection. I believe it's covering. It's, it's comforting. It's restoration. It's restoration. It's saying that from this day, you walk in a new walk because you got some new shoes. Glory be to God. You're walking a new walk. You got some new shoes. Total restoration. Then they had the party. They killed the fatted calf. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And at the feast, it simply says this. You're back. You're not tolerated. You're celebrated. Oh, glory be to God. And let me just say, let me just say, because God has said sons and daughters are coming back in this house. God has said they're coming back. When they come back, it has always been our philosophy that you don't get to the end of the line. You get back to your place in the line. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And when they come back, hallelujah, then we have to restore dignity. We have to restore honor. We have to restore sonship. Come on, somebody. And they know trying to, well, you got to earn your trust. And all. No, 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 no. When they come back, we got to have the feast. We got to have the party. We've got to celebrate. Hallelujah. And we got to let people away from their past. Do you understand? The only thing the father did with his past was cover it. And we got to set people free from their past. He already was ashamed. He already felt bad. He already repented. Got to set people free. They don't owe us nothing anyway. Come on here, somebody. Hallelujah. And so we can't tolerate people. We got to celebrate people. Hallelujah. This is total restoration. Everything. Expect total restoration. Expect total restoration. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm hearing it. I don't even know how to say it. I'm going to just say it. That sometimes our life is like a house. And things seem like they go astray. But I see restoration. I see things that seem like they left you coming back. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Uh, sometimes health seems like it goes on the journey, but it's coming back. Hallelujah. Sometimes your financial status seems like it went some, it's coming back. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. I say this prophetically. It's coming back. Hallelujah. And when it comes back, celebrate. Celebrate. Hallelujah. Celebrate. The heart of the Father is celebration. Hallelujah. It's coming back. Thank you, Jesus. This is total restoration. I could talk about the other brother, but um, that's not my subject today. Hallelujah. But Val wrote a book about it, and we got some in the office. Amen. And you can get her book. You should get it just because your pastor read a book. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, you might be watching and you can get it. I'm not trying to sell books, but I just know it's true. Amen. If you ever write one, you'll understand. <laughs> Hallelujah. You'd be surprised at how many people say they're going to write a book, want to write a book. They don't write a book. As easy as you think. Amen. That's why I try to buy books when I know folks bought them. Because I want to support them. Because I understand what it takes. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And most folks don't make money off of them, really, because the cost of publication and stuff like that, you know, um, they don't make a lot of money unless it gets popular. So it's not about that. It's about expression. Amen. That's free. That was just about expression. Amen. Amen. I'm done. Amen. And I could talk about the other brother. The Holy Ghost says I'm done, so I'm done. Yeah. Glory be to God. Total restoration.
I'm going to restore. I'm going to restore. When God restores something, it's different from us. To, you, you know, when people restore a car, they'll replace the worn out parts and they'll polish it up. And really, the idea is to restore it to its original condition. But with God, that's not his heart. When God restores something, he always makes it better than it ever was. You want to know something? In the father's house, I know from the older son that they were just there, they lived there, and they were not celebrated. The son said, you ain't never gave me a party. It's a shift. Because he was invited to the party. He just didn't want to come because he had stank attitude. House. He was in the house. Isn't that something? There's a shift. Restoration always makes things better. So would you believe in for restoration of anything in your life? Expect it to be better. Expect better health. Expect better financial position in your life. Expect those loved ones to not just come back and still struggle. But come back and be in their calling, in their destiny. You know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Because most of them <clears throat> that are out there, almost like Jonah, there's a call on their life. And that's why the enemy's also calling them. Amen? But they're coming back. Hallelujah. Expect better. Expect better. Expect better in Jesus' name. Father, thank you. Thank you for total restoration. Total restoration. <coughs> Next week, Lord, your, your will be, we're going to look at when Peter said, Lord, we, we gave up everything. What about us? I thank you, Lord. I thank you that you always have an answer. You have an answer for the younger brother. You have an answer for the brother that stayed in the house. The brother that stayed in the house didn't lose anything. He only gained. And I thank you for it. I thank you for it. So we celebrate restoration today. We expect restoration, that you're God of restoration, that you're committed to us more than we're committed to you. And you said in your word that even when we are not faithful, you abide faithful because you cannot deny yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, that you cannot deny yourself. So we give you glory in Jesus' name. If you're watching, if you've never given your life to Jesus, or if you're out there, come on. Come back to yourself. Because God has restoration for you. You know, even if you've never been saved, you're supposed to be. Amen? And you know it. And you have all kind of reasons and excuses, but none of them have anything to do with what God is able to do in your life. The son said he wasn't worthy, and you know what? He wasn't. He wasn't. He had cursed his father. He was worthy to be stoned. He was worthy to be killed. He was right. He wasn't worthy. He wasn't even worthy to be a servant. But the Father made him worthy. Save. We're not worthy to be healed. We're not 